to you I call, to you I will surely, you, you will surely heed me, O, o God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words, guard me as the apple of your eye, in the shadow of your wings protect me. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. this Mass is being offered for your health and your intentions. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty and sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus said the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unlarded. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by name, given you a title though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people will, may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is no other. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm response Give the Lord glory and honor. Give the Lord glory and honor. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Tell his glory among the nations, among all people his wondrous deeds. Give the Lord glory and honor. For great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Awesome is he beyond all gods. For all the gods of the nations are things of naught but the Lord made the heavens. Give the Lord glory and honor. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord glory do his name. Bring gifts and enter his courts. Give the Lord glory and honor. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the people with equity. Give the Lord glory and honor. The beginning of the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians. In God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love, 
and endurance in the hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before God our Father, knowing, brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in the power of the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Shine like lights in the world as you hold on to the word of life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man, and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth, and you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good day, everyone. I pray everybody's having a wonderful week. And as we're now in the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and we're quickly rocketing towards our new liturgical year and coming into Advent. So time is moving quick. Uh, my friends, these past few weeks, we've had a number of parables where Jesus is really going on the offensive and taking on the elders of the Jews and the scribes and the Pharisees. And he's going at them very directly in those very strong and uh, seemingly harsh sounding parables that he was giving. And now we see in this chapter, uh, the 22nd chapter of Matthew, uh, again, still in, uh, scripturally speaking, still in Holy Week, now they are going on the offensive against him. They're coming after him now. He's, he's did, he uh, gave his three parables, and now they're coming at him with their own questions. They're trying to entrap him. And uh, he knows that, as we see in our gospel. But you know, what we see here is they're, trapping, they're trying to entrap him publicly. Okay, they're trying to put him on the spot publicly. This is not done like, can we talk to you off to the side? We have a question for you. They're trying to trap him publicly so that he would discredit himself. That's ultimately what they are attempting to do, to get him to discredit himself. And so they come to him, and it's an interesting thing that we see here. It says the Pharisees come on, and they go, and they go with the Herodians. And that's one of the groups we, we, kind of, we know who the Pharisees are. They're one of the religious groups. We know who the elders are. They're the ones who are you know, doing also the religious and in, in charge. Herodians are an interesting group because Herodians are Jews who are tied with Herod, who is tied with Rome. And so we see an interesting thing as they're trying to entrap Jesus. You know, it's one of those things where it makes strange bedfellows. And so you have the Pharisees who would never normally, uh, would you know, enact with the Herodians. They're coming together to trap Jesus. And the Herodians, again, they are, they're all for Rome because Herod is for Rome. Okay, and so they are tied with Herod and... You know, so it's an interesting thing that we're seeing at these two groups coming together to trap Jesus. And they have an incredible question. I mean, if we're honest with ourselves, uh, it would, I think almost only Christ himself could get out of this question. Because it's a perfect question. It's a perfect trap, really, if we think about it. Where he says, where they say to him, after petting him, I, I, I always love that. Teacher, we know you're a truthful man and that you're, you know, you give your opinion and you're not concerned with anybody else's opinion. And they're, they're kind of, they're petting him, you know, and he knows it. He, it's, 
they're, they're trying to set them up. You know, they're kind of making that appeal, if you will, to vanity, to his vanity, as if that was there. And so then they ask him the question, you know, is it lawful to pay the, the census tax or not? Again, perfect question. Because if he says no, the Herodians are going to go report him, and then he is going to be at odds with Rome. And Rome, which ultimately does, you know, he is crucified at the hands of the Romans, at the hands of the Jews as well. Uh, but he would set himself at odds with Rome. If he says yes, then that group that's around him listening to him, they would be extremely upset because they're very, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, they, they don't like Rome. They, just like us today, we don't like paying taxes. I mean, that's just the reality. That's universal throughout time. And they don't want to pay the taxes to this occupying country. And so him saying, yes, pay the taxes, it's going to put him at odds with those who have come to hear him. So it really is a perfect trap. And it's also interesting, if I may, when this gospel was written, uh, just interesting historically, how this would have fallen on Jewish ears, is because by the time this gospel is written, the temple in Jerusalem is destroyed. It's, it's knocked down, it's raised, it's destroyed. And one of the things the Romans did at that time is they figured, okay, you no longer have a temple tax because you don't have a temple, but you're going to pay us a temple tax and it'll be to the temple of Jupiter. And so they were kind of forcing the Jews to uh, pay a tax to really, you know, pagan, a pagan god. You know, so even Matthew's listeners and readers at this time would be very in tune to this question because it was something that they were they were living under, you know, because they're pay, now being forced to pay a tax to the god Jupiter. And that was not setting well whatsoever. But that was part of that whole thing where the temple was raised and the Romans had had enough and basically destroyed, you know, large sections of Jerusalem and really scattered the people. And so this was kind of part of that that they were dealing with at that time. And so he's asking, you know, he's asked this incredible question. And I love what he does because he says, give me the coin, give me the denarius. And he holds up the coin and he says, whose face is on it? And one of the things is whenever a new Caesar came in, <laughs> even if he wasn't legitimate, whenever he came in, a new Caesar came in, the first thing they did was strike the coins. They struck the coins, they struck the money, and got that out there because that was a way of showing they're the ones in charge because everybody's carrying around Caesar in their pocket. You know, they're in charge. So as if you will, it was like a calling card of who they were. Uh, and also there was a sense of, which it doesn't come out here, but is the sense of was also that it was their money. You know, they were kind of, you might have had the money, you might have done something to earn the money, but ultimately that coin even though you, you know, you earned it through your labors or selling something or whatever, that still belonged to Caesar. Okay, so that's why he says, you know, repay what belongs to Caesar. Give him back this coin. You know, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, give to God what is God's. And, you know, he's using that uh, common knowledge of, of the Roman coinage to, uh, you know, give this incredible answer where they have no response to and, and they're, they're left to, to just walk away. Uh, but, the, but the lesson that comes out of it for us, though, is that we do have an obligation. We do have an obligation. We have an obligation to our country, you know, to where we live, to the government where we're at. But we have a higher obligation as well to God. And so we're not free from the obligations we have in the civil and civic sense you know we are part of the countries we we have an obligation for the united states you know to vote to, you know, we do pay our taxes um you know we have an obligation to our country and we have to remember that but we also have a higher obligation to christ to god 
And so we are citizens both of our country, but we are also citizens of heaven as well. And so that is where our obligation lies. It really does lie in both areas, both the civic and the, the religious, you know. So let us remember that, that we do have a part to play in our society as well as a part to play in our faith. God bless you all. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. The eyes of the Lord are upon those who hope for his kindness. Filled with confidence, we now ask the Father. That this World Mission Day may renew within all Christian communities the joy of the gospel and awareness of the responsibility to announce it, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all will defend true justice and the common good in order to shape our society according to God's wisdom and order, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have abandoned the practice of faith, that the grace of Christ will soften their hearts and move them to return to the sacraments, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For children with special needs and their parents and families, that they will be given all the love and support they need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, and all who feel abandoned or forgotten, that they experience the consoling presence of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to offer to God all that belongs to him, all our thoughts, our words, and our actions, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray also for the men and women in our military and our first responders. May they come home safely and soon. And may those who have seen war, war or violence find peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, let your mercy be upon us as we place our trust in you. We ask this as we ask all things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The Son of Man has come to give his life as a ransom for many, the body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. We now offer our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. Unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. And have a blessed and wonderful week, everyone.